Well, I just wanted to try to talk to you a little bit about implementing your system. I mean, this is a crucial spring for that. Yeah. you got to make some progress. You can't just show up in early August and right. be starting from scratch. So can yeah. you talk about that and what you want to get done this spring? Sure. Well, there's got to be a balance, right? We're trying to install a new defense, but we're also trying to get ready to defend the option. Mm -hmm. right, those are two very different things. So uh, we're going to get our base defense in. Uh, we're going to have a good sound plan against the option because obviously we're going to compete against our offense and we want to be sound when we do that. But right now it's where we're trying to establish a culture. We're trying to, to create a standard of how hard we play and how we run the football and then just working on our fundamentals, man. Mm -hmm. but we got to get at the basics, right? We got to get great at the fundamentals. We got to be disciplined. We got to be great at our technique and we got to run our tails of the football. That's what we're trying to get done right now. What is your background in terms of defending the option? During the course of your career, where have you run across it? Sure, uh, in a bunch of places. When I was at Elon in the Southern Conference, you know, you had Georgia Southern running it back then. Mm -hmm. uh, Walford ran it, of course. And mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, I faced it throughout my career, usually a couple times a year. Mm -hmm. um, so I you've was, had to devise some, uh, not some thoughts, right? Yes, sir, that's right. Yeah, and then, you know, being at uh, Kennesaw State, obviously, and seeing it every day for, for five years. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the ins and the outs of it and uh, what works and what doesn't. And so how um, uh, your defense can it easily merge from option to spread to defending those two types of s attacks? Yeah, I think as, as seamlessly as possible as that, as that can be, I think so. Uh, you know, we're, we're a, we say we're a 4-2-5 with some 3-4 principles. Um, we defend the option a lot out of an odd front, so it's not a stretch for us to get to a, an, an odd front uh, in our base defense. Mm -hmm. So how much uh, jumping in and out of odd and even fronts do you think you'll be doing? Quite a bit. Yeah, we want to keep people off balance and want to, want to, want to confuse guys up front, uh, want to confuse quarterbacks. So we'll, we'll definitely take advantage of them even in an odd front. So how are certain positions going to be different? If I remember when I was talking on your phone, I know that they've kept the identifiers, Raider, Striker, yep. but I think you called them something different at Kennesaw. Mm -hmm. But I have to presume that certain positions are going to have different responsibilities in your system. It's not going to be the same as what – Navy did last year. Sure, it's not. And we, we kept some of the same verbiage uh, and, and I carried some of mine in as well. But uh, the way we're built in our, in our base defense is similar. Uh, we'll do a lot more things out of that as far as the fronts that we'll get in and out of, as far as how much odd we actually do, it'll be a little different. But will responsibilities be different? Like if I'm the left end, uh, if, am I going to be doing something different than I did the years before? Maybe if the nose tackle, inside line, or, or all, are these yeah. guys having to learn some new stuff? Some Absolutely. New yeah, there's a lot of new things they're going to have to learn. Uh, and, there, and there's always all, some carryover. Uh, you know, it can't be completely different on defense. You know, so there's some, there's some things, some verbiage they used last year, some coverage concepts that are very similar with slight tweaks here and there. So, you know, since they do have a lot to learn, you're at square one. Where do you start? How do you start the process of teaching them? Yeah, it's tough, man. You, you gotta you gotta get your base defense in, and it's day one. It's football one on one. You know, we've had three weeks of meetings, and hopefully we eliminate part of that in those meetings. And then obviously getting out on the field and doing it uh, when you're when you got helmets on is a little different now. And now you're reacting to what you see as opposed to seeing it on the board, watching it on film. So I think we've done a good job of getting our base defense, our base concepts in. And right, now we just gotta start building on that as we install. You know, part of this, you're teaching the, the defense, but you also got to evaluate the players, too, as they go along. What are you looking for in the players to, to, yeah. to what do you hope to see out of them? Yeah. I'll tell you what we did in our morning runs, right? We based our depth chart off of the effort that we got out of the fourth quarter runs in the mornings um, because all these guys have a clean slate. And I know that certain guys played a lot of snaps last year, and, and, and you, you got to give that some credit. Uh, but we want to create a culture, like I said earlier, of guys that, that play with phenomenal effort. All right? We want to play harder than anybody else in the country. Uh, and so we're going to play the guys that do that. And it may not always be the most talented guy. Um, so that's how we created a depth chart initially uh, with considering some of the guys that have played a lot of snaps here. Uh, and then that's going to change every day. We call it an organizational chart, basically. All right, so that could change day to day. Um, and yeah, we're in the process, like you said, of evaluating these guys every day. So the guys that are running the football, the guys that, that, that are productive, those guys are going to move up the depth chart. And we say the best players are going to play. It doesn't matter if you're a senior, it doesn't matter if you're, if you're a freshman. It doesn't matter if you played 50 snaps or, or, or no snaps. You know, the best guys are going to play. So you have 15 practices in the spring. Where do you hope to be at the end of this? I tell these guys we want to get 2 or 3% better every day. All right? and, and we're probably going to get maybe half to 60% of what we will do in the fall in this spring. All right? right now we want to run the football. We want to get our base stuff. We want to get great at the fundamentals all right? and understanding the base concepts. Uh, understand what's going on around us, all right? So, yeah, if we get 56% of our, our defense in the spring, I'll be I'll be pretty satisfied. Why have you elected to coach a position? I mean, obviously the previous coordinator didn't, and mm -hmm. that way he could get around the whole field and not feel like he's. Why Why do you want to sure. coach a position? Yeah, well, I love having a room. 
and I love coaching on the grass. Uh, I love running an individual fundamental session, and I just, I've always done that. I love coaching the back end. I enjoy that part of it, and so I'd like to continue to do that if, if at all possible. Now, do you feel you can still, at the same time, oversee the whole unit like you have yeah, to? Yeah, absolutely. Now, we've got a little more numbers here, and so you'll see in the units we're, we're breaking them up. Uh, but we've got enough good coaches here that, that understand the defense and know what we're doing, and I feel really confident uh, in splitting things up at times. Well, I just first talk a little bit about Coach Newberry. I mean, I've, I've heard nothing but positive things about the man. I know Coach Nehemiah is very, very confident in what, you know, he's happy to have him here. And kind of just tell me if having worked for him, what this guy brings to the table. The first thing about Coach Newberry I want to tell you is, first of all, he's just a good man. Um, I've been with him now for seven years, and he's the type of guy I want coaching my son. Um, he's very smart. Um, he knows the front and the back very well. Um, the one thing about Coach Newberry, that's been different from other guys I know is just the in-game adjustment part. He's really good at making in-game adjustments, mm -hmm. seeing what's happening. He knows, you know, where things, where we may be weak at at a spot, and he can able to make a call to make sure we strengthen that up. So just, he's just a great man, number one. Um, he's really good at in-game adjustments, and kids love playing for him. So obviously, I mean, this was a big decision. I mean, he came here as D coordinator. He wanted you and. Coach Volker to come with him, but you could have stayed at Kennesaw where you had you know been and were comfortable. What? Why did you follow him up here to the Navy? Um, yes, sir. It's really simple for me. Um, who Coach Newberry is. Um, I followed him to Kennesaw State from Elon, mm -hmm. um, and I just know the type of guy he is. Um, he's a very um, processor. He, he's a guy that's not going to take a job unless it's really good. Um, another thing, um, you guys know I work with Coach Bohannon, for Coach Bohannon, who used to be here, and the our guys at Kennesaw used to come and visit with Coach Nehemiah and the offensive staff and used to come back and just talk about the type of culture that they had here at Navy and the type of great guys they were, and family guys, and, you know, and I watched Navy from a far, you know, um, know how successful Coach Nehemiah has been, um, know what he stands for, and he's the type of guy I want to work for. So for me and my family, it was really easy. Um, getting, being with Coach Newberry and then joining a family like Navy, it was really easy for me, a great decision for me, and uh, I can just tell you it's been the best decision of my coaching year thus far. So uh, in talking to Coach Newberry, um, he kind of indicated that part of the reason he wanted you and Coach Volker here is because you're integral to what he wants to do. Those positions are integral, and he wanted people that knew his system that he could trust. Can you just kind of talk about why the positions you're coaching are so crucial to the overall scheme? And are you having to teach the guys you're coaching, the positions you're coaching, some new tricks, if you will? Yes, sir. Um, a lot of it is new for those guys. Um, um, what we're asking the end and the Raider to do, um, what I'm coaching, that Raider for us is a hybrid guy. Um, so what we ask him to do is some different things he's never done, but there's some things he has done. And what we're asking the end to do is some different things we're asking him to do. And like um, Coach Newberry said, I've been with him for seven years now, been in this defense and um as the defense has molded you know and, and grown you know I've grown with it the other thing about coach Newberry that's really good is he's a guy that's always self-assessing like after every game after every practice what can we do better what can we tinker what you know what I mean so um I've been with him now I know, kind of know what he wants um so those two positions are really important for us what we ask those guys to do um so that's kind of why he you know it's important for me to come with him um, sure. thanks so you know first and foremost can you talk a little bit about coach Newberry and why you would decide to come here to Navy with him? I was a, that's an easy answer. He's a great human being. I mean, he's a guy that uh, obviously I was out of a job two years ago, and he had to say uh, to help bring me to Kennesaw State. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't know him at all. Mm -hmm. and, and really, over those two years, he's became one of my best friends. Uh, he's a phenomenal human being. Um, and then on top of that, he's an excellent football coach. Uh, very, very detailed. Uh, inspired by effort, inspired by people, uh, relationship-based person, um, and just a, a great human being to be around on a daily basis. Can you talk about the challenge of installing the system? I mean, this is a big spring in regard to that, and you know, there's changes. And I think part of the reason he wanted you, uh, the two coaches from Kennesaw, with him was because you needed some help with installing this properly, and you all knew the system had been with him. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. I, I think in, in coaching, one of the things you're always looking for is continuity and comfortability. And, and when you can get those two things, it's uh, it's big. And obviously, we went through some change here, but what we did bring in was some continuity within the defensive staff. So so you sort of get the best of both worlds in terms of that. So your position in particular, the inside linebackers in Navy's 3-4 scheme, they're primarily run stoppers. They sometimes had to peel back and play pass coverage. But, I mean, without giving away state secrets, is the position different of what they're asking your 
position group to do a little different than what Navy's done in the past in their straight 3-4 scheme? Sure, it, it is going to be a little bit different. It's going to rush the passer. We're going to ask them to, to play against the run. Uh, we need dynamic playmakers at that position, and I think we have those guys.